It's about to get a little rocky today on Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook in the sense that Wade is targeting rock dams and rocky shorelines in an effort to locate some big bass. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Look at that one right there, boys and girls. Rocks to a bass is the equivalent to an all-you-can-eat buffet to us humans. The algae on rocks creates food for bait fish and crawfish, two of a bass favorite prey. And during the colder months, rocks provide a source of heat for bass. These two factors, along with many others, make rocks an area you won't want to pass up. It's early, early in the morning, and there's something about getting on any fishing spot early in the morning to get you excited, but I really like to hit the rocks early in the morning. Like, chance low light. There's not a lot of wind today, but what we got in front of us is big, big rocks. You know, there's something about getting up early in the morning and casting on any target that I get excited about. There's something about fishing rocks early in the morning, fog on the water. I always feel like I'm gonna catch some. Of course, right now, right outside of San Antonio, it looks like I'm fishing in a prison. I'm on Browning, Browning Lake, and they've got the, <laughs> the dam all pissed off. Constantina wire, got cameras over here, but this is a very, very public lake. It gets a lot of, uh, a lot of people come here and fish, but it uh, has some awesome bass fishing when they're biting, good little hybrids, but on these rocks at the right time of the year, you can really catch some big ones. God, God that's gotta be a striper or something. That fish is going way the other direction. I don't know what I've got right here. Yeah, that's the thing about fishing rocks like this, you don't know what you're gonna catch, but it's not coming up like a bass. Golly, what do I have? This has to be a big hybrid or something. I don't know what I've got. A redfish? You know, this lake does have fresh, have redfish in it. Yeah, throwing water everywhere. I have no idea. No! What have I got? A big old hybrid. Holy cow, look at the size of that thing. I love fishing rocks like this. Never know what I'm gonna catch anywhere I go. Look at the size of that thing. Golly! That was fun. Look at the size of that fish. Come here, buddy. Wow. Oh, I can't even get my hands around you. You're so thick. You have a mouthful of hooks. Oh, this thing is so thick, I can't get, look at the size of that fish. <laughs> That's fun. You know, rocks like that, there's a giant drop off. I'm going to show you on the Garmin here in just a second that I'm cranking down along these rocks. It's early morning and that is a fat hybrid right there. A lot of things call rocks home. Let's catch another one. Go back there, buddy. Yeah. You know what I'm doing right now is I've got my boat right on the drop off of this. These rocks are coming off. If I go this way a little bit, you can see how fast they come up. I mean, I'm barely a rod tip away, rod length away and it's gonna be up to two feet. If I go this way out here looking at my depth finder, you can see how fast it drops off. And I'm kind of almost paralleling it with a little bit of quarter and throwing that shallow water and cranking it down along that drop off. And it seems like to me where I can find that drop off where all these broken rocks will you know, eventually end and drop to that deeper water, a lot of times I can catch them. That's not to say that I don't want to throw right on the bank because I do that a, a lot and then just reel it parallel along it as well. But, you know, paying attention to what your depth finder is showing you and how everything is set up will really, really help you digest on, you know, where the fish can be at. Coming up next, more rock fishing tips when we return. What I love about the Bradley Smoker is that it 
cooks everything perfectly and it holds all the juices in. So today we are going to be smoking some barbecue ribs, some venison sausage, and some dove, which is awesome. You will never grill me doves again. <laughs> I have to have them in the Bradley smoker. I would prefer to use the Bradley smoker every time I cook. Well, that's really true because I love this thing. Okay. No lie. For more recipes, log on to bradleysmoker.com. When I talk about Sunline, I think of one word, confidence. Sunline FX2 is what I use for all of my frogging and flipping. SX1 braid, which braid plays a little big part in, uh, in fishing line. Shooter, I'm gonna use in those close quarter deals, like flipping and pitching. One of my favorite techniques in fishing the tournament trail is to fish offshore ledges. We have taken the, the questions out of the equation. Take my word for it. It works, it works, dude. After all my years of searching, I finally busted the method I had in. The Angle High Performance Cooler, it's incredible. Just look at this lid, what a powerhouse. It's so freaking strong, so reliable, I just wanna boom. This silicone gasket's better than rubber. Why, hello there. Are your basin sidewalls way thicker for superior insulation? Ah oh, yes, after 10 days, still cold, still fresh. Let's hear Yeti do that. With angle coolers, it's official. The Yeti is busted. Let's get down to business. Quiet, you sons of fishes. Now, what? I, I'm switching sonar. Why? Because th now I can see fish swimming live in front of my boat. I, I, I even see fish attack my lure. Y'all sonar is just history. I'm out. I'm with him. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Cabela's, it's in your nature. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. Continuing our theme of fishing rocks, wades out on Bernie City Lake, fishing a rocky dam under some windy conditions. You know, when you start looking at you know, how to fish, what I'm doing right here. These rocks on this particular dam, they're gonna go out a pretty good ways, uh, probably about 12, 13 feet. So I could actually get out and crank with a deep diving crankbait. But right now, there's a good amount of wind, probably 10 or 12 miles an hour blowing down this dam right now. And the water's a little agitated, it's a little churned up. So I feel like I can catch a fish cranking right now, right up on the bank, one to five feet deep. And, and probably what I'll do is I'll go up and fish it this way, and then I may come down the next time and be a little bit further out, you know, making a different cast. Right now, I'm paralleling. I'm throwing it up to about a foot and then reeling it back to where I can feel the rocks. My next pass out, I may be a little deeper. I may be out, like I said, the boat sitting in 12, 13. Might throw the, you know, the rock crawler. I might be throwing a, a bigger mean eye bait by Cabela's, whatever it may be, and kind of quartering. So adjust and adapt your presentation based on what the fish are telling you. There's one. Good one. Good one. Golly, I bounced that crankbait off that rock. And he just loaded up on it. Holy cow, is that a big one? Oh, that's a great bass. What a bass. I tell you what. Cranking rocks, water temperature in the 50s right now. Look at this guy right here. Get him to come back to here. Get off those rocks a little bit. Wore him out. Ah, good fish right there. He took that Spro Little John off those rocks. You know, I've got a couple different Spro crankbaits on right now up here. I've got a rock crawler, I've got a fat papa, and I've got this bait here on and just kind of mixing it up based on how 
deep this water is. And right now I'm bouncing this crankbait in about four foot of water. And this particular bait right here is perfect for that. So we're gonna let him back see if we can catch another one. He shook me up. Ah, that's a good bass. Go back down there, buddy. You know, it's always amazing these growths and changes in fishing gear and everything. You know, my 7610 that I've got right here, clear that out of the way, is showing the panoptics. I've got the PS21 transducer on. Right now it's looking ahead of it. So you can see the bank's gonna come up. Now watch when I swing it out to the right. Watch it drop down like that. And it, it's just instantaneous feedback. Now I'm aiming over here to the left and you can see the dam, it's that close and how it's coming up. Now what that tells me as a fisherman, and you look out here at my traditional sonar where I'm seeing some fish that were stacked up, that's right underneath me. That's what's out around and in front of me. So I can make my decisions as I move my feet up and down and go back and forth on everything that's happening around me. And this is just instantaneous feedback for a fisherman on where I need to make that next cast. What's ahead of me, what's to the left, what's to the right. It's not history, it's live right there. There's one. Oh yeah, coming up, little bitty guy. All bites are good, bouncing on these rocks. You know, it doesn't matter where I fished across the nation. When I can find rocks, I can find some bass. More fishing line. Ooh, it's bad. You know, it's not uncommon. You always find trash out there and on the lakes. You hook other people's fishing line all the time. Nope. We're not gonna learn, you know, you look at this big glob of what looks like about 80 pound braided line and you know, we're all gonna break off. It's absolutely gonna happen when you fish. But the thing about it is, is when you get a chance to pick up somebody else's mess, let's pick it up while we're out there fishing. You know, you can just see, this is a great picture, perfect scenario right here. You've got a lot of wind blowing in on these rocks right here. We're kind of at the end of the dam. It's obviously a little point jutting off of it right here. So you've got a great mix of cover for these bass. And you know, when you get wind blowing in in a situation like this, it's just, it's, it's agitating the entire food chain there. All the little bait fish, the plankton, everything's fittering around. And I mean, it's a buffet. I mean, it's right where they ought to be living. I like a buffet. You know, boat positioning will always change anytime you're fishing basically any piece of structure, but we're looking at the rocks we're fishing right now. Uh, you know, depending on the bait, you might be right up against it, paralleling it. Right now, I'm actually throwing a little deeper diving crankbait on this set of rocks, and I'm backing off, kind of quartering towards it. Other times, I might be actually casting exactly towards the rocks, you know, basically like this. So depending on the bait, depending on the presentation, depending on how the fish are set up, is gonna make that determination on the angles and the baits that you're gonna be fishing anytime you're fishing something like this, be it a dam or a jetty. There's one. Good one too. Good. Come here, buddy. There's, you know, rip rap bass. It's just amazing to me how many fish of all species can be caught in a situation just like this, where you've got the rocks, it's all broken up, and you know, it's just alive with forage, it's alive with everything. Doesn't matter whether you're on the salt water or you're in the fresh water. It's a place that fish just live. The Fisherman's Handbook crew trust Ranger boats to get them to and from their favorite spots on the water. Let's put your Ranger knowledge to the test. Who were the four Ranger anglers that have won both the Bassmaster Classic and the Forest Wood Cup? For the answer to this, or to find out more about Ranger boats, visit MyDreamRig.com.
Hobie's Mirage Drive kayaks set the standard for fun on the water. Whether your passion is fishing, sailing, or recreational adventure, Hobie's got a kayak for you. Hobie's Mirage Drive mimics nature's proven designs for efficient and powerful propulsion and enhances your kayaking experience. Mirage Power, Mirage Performance, Mirage Drive. Hobie, enjoy the ride. Engineered to excel, the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series are built for the ultimate ownership experience. It's a commitment to excellence packed with real-world advantages and exclusive features. Experience the accelerated performance standards of the legendary Ranger Z series. From first light to last cast, they're put together to set you apart. Yamaha Outboards. Reliability starts here. Gill that I've used for the last five years has been a far superior product than anything else on the market. The main thing that's really important to me is me being dry. I've been wearing Gill suits now for three years and never once have I gotten wet. Put the cool in life. We put the cool in coolers. Arctic ice. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products. We keep you outdoors. Bradley Smoker, food smoking made easy. Hobie Fishing. Mirage Drive Pedal Systems. Welcome back to Cabela's Fisherman's Handbook. Wade's moved on to Lake Somerville to fish the rocky boat ramps found here. There's been a warming trend in the weather, and with the wind blowing, the bass should be biting. I a lot of bait right off the edge of this. I saw a couple of gulls diving down. I mean, there's definitely going to be bait up here. So. You can see on all the contour lines, it's really coming up real fast. Got a little rocks, a little current. It's a good place to chunk and wind. There he is. Coming up. Oh, come on. Nice chunky fish right there. Drop that power pole. Hummer, boy, now he ate the old mean eye right there. What a chunky bass. That's nice. That's how you want to do it. Can't wait to fish. He tried to swallow it. Let's get him. This is one of the reasons when you're throwing a crankbait, you have got to have a good set of pliers. Boy, look at that. This fish here has been cold. See that finger mark right there where my finger's coming through? That's where a cold ring from a tournament. Somebody got rid of a good one. <laughs> Go back. You know, this bait that I'm throwing, it's the Cabela's Mean Eye. And it is, there's several of them in this series, but this one here is designed for this water that I'm fishing right now, about two to five foot deep, and it's got a great action cover. Covers a lot of water with, you know, that type of action that just enhances a strike, makes them want to strike, makes them want to bite, and that's what you're looking for when you're fishing shallow. You want something that's gonna look like a bait fish, a, a shad, or you know, a crawfish, something that's darting and dip, you know, jigging and wigging and making all kinds of moves when it's going through the water because that's what a bait fish does. It triggers that predatory reaction, and that's basically what happened right there. I'm just out here chunking and whining across an old point. Wind's coming across. It's fairly shallow. A boat's sitting in four foot right now, but I'm throwing to like less than a foot. 
And that fish hit about halfway back. I mean, who knows what's laying out there, an old random rock, some brush. I mean, we're just, he's just up there chasing shad. You just don't know. There's some fish right here on the end of this deal. I, you know, there's always a sweet angle you get. And I've had several of them smack it. And they're probably good. Maybe running some shad or something on the end of these rocks with this wind, great little current crossed it. And when they eat it, they got it. No question about it. You know, and I, I've cranked it both shallow with one of the shallow running versions, and now I'm using kind of a mid range depth one here. So I've covered everything from two feet to about eight feet along this and had bites all across the board. Can't argue with that. You know, all I'm doing right here on this point is I'm watching the pan optics. I can see where everything is lining up, where it's dropped off. You can see right now, you can see a brush pile. That's the brush pile right there. That's at the end of this boat ramp that somebody's come out here and sank, you know, for tournament bass fishing. You can see that on a lot of other electronics as well, but it's always history. And when you're using a pan optics, it's literally showing you where it is at that moment. So you can line up the arrow on your trolling motor and make a precision cast to it. And a lot of people are hung up using this type of equipment to aim at fish. Well, I like to really use it to find those pieces of cover to make accurate casts, whether it's a brush pile, a rock pile, a drop off, a weed line, whatever it is, it shows me all that. And I can use it at that moment. God, there's another good one. Come here. Be a great spot to catch a lemon if you're fishing in a tournament. Awesome. They are laying right on that left edge of that drop off. The ultimate predator has evolved again. Now, Yamaha VMAX SHO Performance is prowling the waters in four hungry, exciting new models. With their four valves per cylinder and double overhead cam fuel injected design, these advanced four stroke predators are taking performance to a whole new level. Vicious, lean, efficient. VMAX SHO, the pack is growing. At Amphibia, we've resolved to build a product that nobody else offers using methods that nobody else is using, optimized for life on water and land. The choice of top bass fishing pros. Amphibia frames are designed to fit comfortably no matter how your face is shaped, to stay firmly in place through your most physical activities and to float in water. Amphibia sunglasses are truly designed for life on the water. Heavy duty, rugged, and designed for the big game hunter and angler. The Food Saver Game Saver Titanium Vacuum Sealer has the power and performance to seal in the freshness of your game and fish for up to three years, five times longer than standard storage methods. And with its extra wide dual and repetitive sealing capabilities, that's a ton of big game savings. Tough tested and rated 4.8 out of five stars by outdoorsmen just like you. The Food Saver Titanium System, it's a true game changer. Gill that I've used for the last five years has been a far superior product than anything else on the market. The main thing that's really important to me is me being dry. I've been wearing Gill suits now for three years and never once have I gotten wet. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Ingle Coolers, a legend in reliability. Hydrowave, ignite a feeding frenzy. Arctic ice. We put the cool in coolers. All right, got another one here. This is a little more isolated from a rocky boat ramp perspective, you know, fishing these rocks and concrete. Definitely some fish on them. So far, we haven't caught any of those absolute giants, but we're getting bit, and I'll take bites all day. We've been very successful fishing rocks on today's show. Wade has targeted rock dams and now boat ramps. And with the wind blowing like it is, Wade's found a school of fish that are all fired up. There's one. This might be a better one here. Oh yeah, a little better. Nice little two pounder. Windy, windy, windy point right here. Across this rocks. Great place for them to set up feed. There he is. God, I don't know how many in a row I've caught right there. Look how they're eating that bait. 
peacock in the mean eye is showing out right now. I'll tell you what's going on in my opinion. We've just hit the perfect scenario right now today. You've got a great warming trend. These fish are moving out of the de back, moving out of the deep water. They're heading back to start setting up the spawn. And when you get that and you can find them ganged up like this, you can just absolutely annihilate them. There he is. Oh, I think we got another good one. Nice one. <laughs> this just becomes fun here. I don't know if this is a bass. Giant bass. Giant bass. So this is how you want to test equipment, whether it's the line, the crankbait, or what it is. We're going to go back here with you. Fish. I need you back here. Come here. Lay your big old head down on there. Oh yeah! <laughs> Look at that one right there, boys and girls. Good one. You know, when you have a day where, where everything kind of comes together, you've got wind, you've got a warming trend, you've got a big moon coming in the in that early spring, you have to think the fish are coming from the deep, going to the bank, and all those little secondaries that you can find provide an opportunity to you know, catch a lot of fish. And that's really a man-made secondary on that boat ramp right there. I mean, the rest of the bank is pretty plain. We pulled up with wind blowing down on it. The pan optics right away showed me kind of a little bit of, of brush or something at the end of that boat ramp. I fired out there, caught a couple, and from then on, it was nonstop. I mean, the mean eye was cranking down the edge of those rocks, and they were just smoking it one bass after one bass. And that's that's not uncommon when you find the, the perfect storm, the perfect situation, the right bait combination. You can catch a lot of fish like that. You just got to cover a lot of water until you find a big school. As we've learned today, rocks can be an excellent place to target fish. Whether you're fishing freshwater or even out on the coast, you'll never know what's going on to be at the end of your line fishing rocks. For any of the products seen used on today's show, visit cabelas.com. shallow. That's not good. I need this bait back. Really bad. 